Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, this video is going to be about scheduling a shoot and I can't believe I haven't really done a start to finish video yet that's explained what I usually do when I schedule a shoot and I thought this would be a good video to add to my new series of uh, the business of photography and I feel like it's kind of more to do with the business side because it is a lot of planning, uh, there is a lot of planning involved and organisation so I feel like that kind of comes under that umbrella a little bit and I think sometimes it's really hard to schedule a shoot um, because there's so many different variables that you have to deal with uh, and it can be quite difficult. So I'm just going to tell you guys how I usually schedule my shoots. Um, obviously everyone's different and there is no right or wrong way to do this. I just find this way works for me because it's kind of like, I feel like it's kind of orderly anyway. I've, I feel like over the last eight years or however long I've been working with models and, and teams, creative teams. It's um, just something that I'm trying to perfect all the time in, in just kind of more of a um, scheduled way to uh, organize a shoot. And uh, I find the first thing that I usually start with whenever I plan a shoot is to find a theme. And I think a lot of people probably do the same thing. And when you get inspired to do a certain thing with photography or or you see a theme that you really like or you've seen someone else's photos that you just love and you want to try something similar or you want to take elements from that and, and try it out yourself, I think that's a good place to start. Um, so usually I like to start collecting uh, any sort of inspiration that I can get from magazines, online magazines, uh, the internet in general because there's just so much stuff on there for inspiration purposes. Pinterest is a really good one that I, I use as well. I generally tend to create boards uh, for my different shoots because I think that really helps kind of get all the images together at once. Uh, so I usually use Pinterest in that circumstance but I also have a folder on my computer that I save all the inspiration images that I have to and it's just a gigantic folder so even if I'm not particularly planning a shoot at a certain stage, um, I, I save these photos for later. And so I can go through whenever I'm feeling particularly inspired to do a shoot, I can go through and look through my inspiration images on my computer and see whether there's something there that I might like to try out. So I think that's the most important part first off is just trying to find your inspiration, get it all together and, um, and start sort of your, your scheduling process. My second tip, uh, or my second stage I should say, would be to create a mood board. So this is basically after you've got all your information or your inspiration together and then you dump it in a mood board pretty much. So you've compiled inspiration for hair, makeup, styling, uh, location, everything for your shoot that you want. Just essentially put it into like a Word document or uh, create something in Photoshop that's going to display all of these images or as many of them as you can. And this will make it easier when you do approach the creative team or creative members of a team um, to get on board with the shoot and, and that it's something visual for them to look at so they understand exactly what you want. And I never not do a mood board like I, I just find that it helps myself to be honest because if I'm only working off one image sometimes it can be quite difficult and I like to get a lot together and really really find out the theme that I want to do and and make sure that I know what I'm kind of doing on the day and and that I've got something to refer to especially when it comes to hair and makeup too because if you're not providing um a hairstylist or a makeup artist with any information as far as what they they need to do then they're kind of lost as well and it makes you kind of seem a little bit more incompetent because you don't really know what you're doing and it yeah just mood boards are great and I highly recommend doing them for every shoot that you plan. My third step would be to build your team so this basically entails uh, going out and finding people who might be interested in getting on board with your shoot. I usually do this either by social media, which is usually the way I do things these days. I mean, it's just such a huge platform in, in every way. And generally I will go to Instagram because I find a lot of makeup artists, hairstylists and stylists use Instagram uh, quite a lot. So I like to go through there and see if there's anyone that I haven't worked with or maybe even people that I've worked with previously that I think might have a similar style to the theme that I've picked out and might work in really well with the shoot. I think 
that's pretty important too, finding people that you think might be able to take on the role um, of the theme within the shoot as well because if you're getting like, for example, a hairstylist on board and they primarily do bridal uh, hairstyling, it's kind of a little bit difficult to um, see them maybe doing something that's a lot grungier or very, very out there. Um, you know, high fashion hairstyles, anything like that. So, I mean, obviously there's people out there that can do everything, but um, I think that's just something to keep in mind when you are sourcing people for a team and, and just making sure that they are on board as well and that they're reliable. That's always hard to kind of find out um, from the start though. So that's kind of something you find out as you go along, who, who is reliable and who isn't. But I think it's really important to just make sure that they are fully 100% on board and they're interested in the idea that you've presented to them. So the next step is to really communicate to your team exactly what you want. And this is where the mood board comes in handy because you can pretty much just send it to them uh, via Facebook or email or however you like. And they can see exactly all the inspiration that you've compiled into the mood board and they'll get a really good idea for what you want. Um, so I think, I think that's just the, the best way to go about it. Send the mood board through, maybe describe to them where you might like to shoot or what your ideas are for the shoot and then sort of say to them, well, you know, I'm still open to your ideas as well. So if you have anything new to add to the mix, definitely let me know if there's anything that you want to try out with this shoot. Just let me know and I can maybe add that into the mood board or you can always tweak things. It's really good as well to let makeup artist, hairstylist, stylist know in advance too because they need time to plan uh, before the shoot and they might need to buy things for the shoot or to learn a new technique. So it's really just important to let them know as far as in advance as you can what exactly you need from them. So the next step is to find a location and I always like to... if. If I'm looking at an on-location shoot, uh, so outdoors or or anything like that, I like to location scout first and get a, just a, a general feel for the area and how many members of the public might be around there on the day of shooting and um, just just getting a really good feel for the area that you're looking at shooting in and that, that'll give you more ideas be, even before you do the shoot as to where you can shoot or the poses that you can make the model do. Um, it's just, it's always a really good preparation tactic to go location scouting um, beforehand and maybe even just take a couple of snaps so you can get back home and have a look at the location again and try and figure out what you want to do. The following step to this will be to contact a modeling agency. So this is something I like to do fairly in advance as well uh, because agencies will need time to contact the model and to find out whether they're going to be available for certain shoots. Usually agencies will send through um, like a board of models so there might be say 10 uh, particular models that they choose um, and then you've kind of got a choice of who you'd like for the shoot uh, so yeah they do need time to sort of compile who might be available uh, for the particular dates that you've sorted dates are another thing I would say try and get a date organized for the shoot back when you're communicating to the team exactly what you want and what you're after and maybe having a date set in place then uh, so when you're sending the mood board through to your team, I would say maybe organize a date or some rough dates and then go to the agency with those rough dates and see if those models would be available on, on either of those days. And it, and it kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility that way, but also um, you don't look like you have no idea when this shoot's going to be or a timeline or time frame. So that's really important, I think, just getting some dates organized. Uh, but back to contacting the modeling agency, I'd say just give that a little bit of time to and make sure you try to do that in advance. Following that step, after you've locked in your model and you're pretty sure you know everyone that's going to be there on the day, uh, this is when it's a really good time to create a call sheet. Now, I usually just do a really basic Word document. I get all the details uh, as far as contact details from all the team members. So yeah, it's just going to be all the information about your shoot in one file and you just send that out to everyone in the team. Um, maybe a couple of days before the shoot once all the details are finalized uh, completely and make sure to put your contact details in there the location of the shoot a meeting spot is really important i have done a video on making call sheets and mood boards before so i might actually link that down below if you guys are interested in seeing how i usually do that uh, but yeah, just make sure all the details are pretty much finalized and pop them in the call sheet, send it off. Also add in there anything that the team might need to bring on the day, uh, just so they know ahead of time and you don't get to the shoot and sort of think, oh, well, we could have done with this or we could have done with that. 
um, when it comes to the hair or makeup. So just making sure that everyone knows what they have to bring as well, uh, particularly the model because they might need to bring uh, nude colored underwear or uh, they might need to bring heels, something like that. So just make sure you know what they need to bring as well and add that into the call sheet. And so after your shoot has gone through very smoothly, uh, I hope, <laughs> then comes time just pretty much to say to your team an estimated time of when they might receive the edited photos. And I think this is really just a courtesy thing and a lot of photographers don't, and a lot of photographers don't bother doing this. And if you put yourselves in their position, in especially in the position that they're in that they have given their time and they haven't asked you for money, they haven't been charged, they haven't charged you for their time. Uh, I think it's a really, really nice gesture just to be able to give them a rough amount of weeks uh, before you'll be able to get the photos back to them. And if you're really busy at the time, that's all you have to say to them and, and just let them know, look, I have been quite busy lately. I do have a backlog of images. Uh, this is probably going to take quite a few weeks, like maybe four to six weeks to be finished. Um, like two to four weeks is generally my turnaround time, but that does change. Uh, depending on if I'm busy or or not. I think these days with, with working full time as well, it's very hard for me to get it back in two weeks. So usually it's more like towards the four week mark before I'm able to get all the shots back. But at least they know and they'll probably be appreciative to know in advance maybe when they're gonna get the photos back. Okay guys, that is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if there's anything you would like to add, any tips that you like to do when you're planning a shoot, please put them in the comment section below and I'm sure everyone would love to see. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!